In the workshop, some new parts arrive and now I can demonstrate how to use the optical edge finder. I featured this in a video the other day. It was sent to me by a kind viewer called Dan. I bought some batteries for it, but I couldn't demonstrate it because I did not have a 20mm collet. But now, I have one. I usually buy my workshop tooling from RDG Tools. But when I looked on the website for a 20mm collet, I couldn't readily find just the one. Most of them seemed to be in boxed sets. So I went over to eBay and typed in R8 20mm collet. This one costs around £10, I think. And I bought it from a company via eBay called Gloucester Tools. But there's a problem. This collet is only 20mm on the tapered part. When it goes to the parallel part where the slots are, internally it appears to be unmachined. This is not very good really. All my other R8 collets are machined to the depth of the slots. I thought it would be a good idea to phone Gloucester Tooling, so I did that but I couldn't get through. My internet system is hardwired from the router through a plastic tube all the way up the garden to the workshop. And I used something called a mesh system as a Wi-Fi extender but for some reason it was flashing red today and it wasn't working. So later on in the day when I was back in the house I phoned them again and this time I got through. Took a voicemail which said they weren't accepting calls and recommended that I looked on the website. I really couldn't be bothered. I sent them a message via eBay explaining the problem. I'm going to fit the collet in my three-jaw chuck and bore it all the way down to the end of the slots and that will be fine. That way, the edge finder doesn't stick out quite as much as this. The reason for needing to bore the hole a bit deeper is nothing to do with accuracy, it just makes it difficult to fit. I have to wind the head of the milling machine quite high to fit this long edge finder in place. Some other things arrived in the post, so I think I'll have a look at those. I bought two more of these excellent Pika deep hole markers, and I also bought some refills. I only noticed that refills were available when I was buying these. All you do using a coin or something similar is unscrew the end cap and pour some new ink in. What a great tool. One or two viewers asked me where I got these from. The first two were initially sent to me by a viewer and I really have used them a lot. All you have to do is just search on eBay for Pika Deep Hole Marker or just Deep Hole Marker. You'll find it. Now I have four of these excellent things. Unfortunately the point broke on one of them because I was a bit too heavy handed. But it still works as there's a tiny bit of point showing past the metal sleeve. I often use these marker pens for marking out because you can get quite fine lines as shown here. I put two of the pens in a container with some other pens on the workbench. One of them is on the workbench itself all the time and the other one is on the shelf behind the lathe. I do like the idea of not having to waste time looking for things. Time now to see how the edge finder works. Here's the top of my milling machine. I undo the drawbar, which just for the record is 7 sixteenths of an inch in diameter, it's imperial. Tap it gently with the spanner that I used to undo it. This dislodges the taper of the collet that's currently installed so now I can fit the new one. First of all though, I think it's a good idea to clean up the vice jaws because they're looking a bit dirty and greasy. The absolute last thing I want is a high resistance joint between the ball on the end of the edge finder and the vice itself. This clip shows me pushing the partly bored collet into the spindle. I've lightly engaged the drawbar but I'm not tightening it up yet because I need to put the edge finder tool in place first. This is what it looks like when I've tightened the drawbar, so the collet has been pulled tightly into the R8 taper, but this as far as it will go in, and really I think there's too much sticking out, but I'll proceed anyway. You have to be careful here not to be too heavy handed. I'm turning the handle that moves the table very gently and very slowly. And as soon as I hear this noise, I stop. This edge finder is very sensitive and you need to make sure that the light is glowing at full brightness. The next thing to do is to zero the hand wheel. This is an imperial machine and as you can see each one of the gaps equals one thousandth of an inch. 
it's a better idea to wind this wheel clockwise. I'm winding it anti-clockwise, so the numbers are all in a negative value, but it doesn't really matter. I'm going to make a note of these numbers, then I will re-zero the hand wheel's vernier, and wind the handle in the opposite direction to move the pointer of the edge finder back across to the first vice jaw where I started. I normally do it this way because the old saying, measure twice and cut once, is still very valid. I don't really know what the width of the vice jaws was to start with, but it took eight full turns, zero to zero, and this is where it ended up. And once again, when using a fixed edge finder like this one, unlike a wiggler or wobbler that moves around, you must not, and I repeat, you must not over tighten the hand wheel. When you arrive at the magic number, just divide it by two, you then need to re zero the vernier at one side to get rid of the error factor of backlash and wind the handle to the correct centre position. Beware of backlash, it can give you very, very false readings. Backlash is caused by wear on the screw mechanism. And that's it really. I hope you understand my simple instructions on how to use an optical edge finder. If my machinery was better quality and not quite so old and decrepit, I would fit digital readouts or DROs to them. I really am toying with the idea of buying a new lathe and a new milling machine. From a tutorial point of view, by using old equipment, I can show beginners that you do not need the best of everything to get good results. It's the operator that is the most important. Oh yes, and before I forget, lots and lots of practice. And that's it. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back, making it unnecessary to comment that the videos are too short.